Hey everyone, Anthony here. This week's video is all about comparing three different editors, Premiere Pro, Filmora Pro, and HitFilm. But I won't be alone. My friend Trevor Kessler, who's also into filmmaking, came over for an afternoon, and we talked about various aspects of these editors, so that will be a significant portion of the video as well. All right, let's get started. Quick background before we begin. I obviously edit YouTube videos like this and occasional freelance work, and what do you mainly do? Well, mainly I focus on like visual effects and uh, 3D compositing, that kind of thing, but I do a little bit of editing and some freelance. Premiere Pro needs no introduction, a ton of people use it, and if you're in the video world, it's pretty safe to assume that you've at least heard of it, even if you don't use it yourself. Filmora Pro is the new editor on the block, having been released just a few months ago as a more advanced version of Filmora 9, which is an editor that I've actually covered quite a bit on my channel. Finally, HitFilm is a pretty well-known piece of software as well. When we talk about HitFilm, we're generally referring to HitFilm Express, because A, that's the version Trevor and I have the most experience in, and B, it's just the more popular version. HitFilm Pro is a thing, and we mention it a couple of times, but for the most part, we're talking about HitFilm Express. In an attempt to give this video some sort of structure, we looked at five different categories. Interface, ease of use, slash accessibility, expandability, pricing, and then finally, there's an attempt at a conclusion. So without further ado, let's jump right in. My camera battery is about to die and I don't want to lose everything, so let's hurry this up. Interface is important because it's actually what inspired this video in the first place. So in my Filmora Pro impressions video from a few months back, I talked a lot about how the interface was very reminiscent of Premiere. That's still true, but that was before I took HitFilm into the equation. Right when you open Filmora Pro, the interface versus when you open HitFilm, Express, and Pro are pretty much identical, the layout of all of it. You just need like a couple of little adjustments, but it's, it's very similar. Here's a shot of the editing timelines compared. And here are the text editors side by side. And finally, here are the effects panels side by side. It's, it's like the same interface. So we've got the two editors that are basically clones of each other, and then they're somewhat reminiscent of Premiere as well, but that's not actually a bad thing. If you learn how to use one program, you'll be right at home in any of the others if you ever need to switch over for whatever reason. Moving on to our next category. It's safe to say that all three editors are potentially very intimidating if you're a beginner. So what would you say, like, the overall experience between the three? Is it, is it similar? It's, it's pretty similar. Right. I'd say beginner-wise, uh, HitFilm and Filmora Pro, because they're pretty much carbon copies, are right. the easiest to use, and then Premiere is way more advanced. Mm -hmm. If you, you can set it, you can set the settings, but right out of the, out of the box, uh, metaphorically speaking, it's a lot more unpack. Uh, Premiere is the most resource intensive. Oh right? yeah. Yeah, so like uh, the minimum system requirement is 8 gigs of RAM. Uh, they recommend that you have 16. That's not that's not minimum. That's like if you want to be able to open the program, you need 8 gigabytes. You need you need right. 8 gigabytes to right. even be able to like play it without like the choppy every mm -hmm. other 10 frames is yeah. like you need upwards of 16 gigs. Right. And HitFilm is obviously designed for beginners and they require a minimum of four gigabytes of RAM. I mean... The system requirements used to be like, what, six gigabytes? Mm -hmm. It was six gigabytes, yeah. now it's four. It runs a lot better now than it did. It's, mm -hmm. it's very well optimized now. Yeah, I don't know how many people are still running four gigabyte laptops or if, whatever. If but so, but um... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so like, Stop eight, like eight, giga, eight gigabytes is like the minimum. <laughs> pretty sure, I know the system specs for Filmora 9 mm -hmm. at least are pretty low at, at four gigabytes. I would assume Filmora Pro is similar. Mm -hmm. Filmora Pro is actually pretty zippy overall. Like it's mm -hmm. like, it opens lightning fast. You're in the project lightning fast, like f pr with Premiere. Well, you like, do have an SSD, right? That well, yeah, but like even with an SSD in my system, like Premiere takes a good minute to boot up, mm -hmm. um, 30 seconds to a minute. And with Filmora Pro, like, you can get in and even out uh, <laughs> in, like, 10 seconds. And, and HitFilm is kind of in between in terms mm -hmm. of overall responsiveness, I'd say. Oh, at, HitFilm, least... hit film, it takes longer to get into a project because you have to mm -hmm. open it. you got to go through the t sequence. Mm -hmm. Or not, not the sequence. you got to go through the opening animation, and then you have to go through, like, the YouTube videos because they have right. all their YouTube links and social. Yeah, that's kind of kind of annoying. <laughs> then you have to open it and then you have to select new uh, editor, not compositor, and then you open it and then you set all the... It takes longer to open 
hit film, I think, is the longest premiere followed by, and then Filmora, you press it and then, like, you, you look up and it's already open for you. Right. So that was ease of use slash accessibility. You can see that I'm editing it right here. The way it's turning out, it probably could have been retitled something like performance, but it's too late in the process to change that, so I'm just gonna roll with it. Anyway, next we're moving on to the expandability section, which covers plugins, add-ons, uh, companion apps, and all that good stuff. So yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> By expandability, we mean like plugins and various add-ons to add additional functionality. Mm -hmm. Premiere has a very clear advantage over Filmora, and that's- Can Filmora run plugins, though? That's the question, like, we don't really know yet. If I had to guess, based on the older Filmora, versions i don't think so no. but i mean because premiere you got all of the red giant stuff mm -hmm. and like the, the boris effects yeah. all of all of like the color grading and a really like magic bullet looks from red mm -hmm. giant is the biggest one please sponsor us um <laughs> that's that's the biggest one right. and fx home the company that makes hit film they actually <laughs> make a plugin for premiere it's called ignite express does hit film work with plugins if it can be used in premiere i'm pretty sure you can use it in hit film Pro, okay. but you can't do that in HitFilm Express. So, according to Trevor, plugins don't work in HitFilm Express, but FX Home more than makes up for that with a vast library of admittedly overpriced add-ons like 3D particles, lens flares, LUT packs, and so much more. So, if you're willing to spend a little bit of money here, you'll still be able to get some pretty cool stuff. The equivalent for Filmora Pro is Film Stocks, which replaces the effects store from older Filmora versions. They sell some music, explosions, graphics, other special effects, pretty much on par with HitFilm's add-on store. But in the end, a couple of add-on stores are nothing compared to what's capable with Premiere. Trevor already mentioned the Red Giant plugins, but there are tons more out there, way too many to go over right now. There's also Adobe Fonts, which is basically this huge library full of every single font ever known to humanity, and all I have to do is activate a font and it shows up in Premiere for use in my videos. It's also worth mentioning that Premiere integrates really well with several other Adobe apps, like like Audition and After Effects. Really, the possibilities are endless. Okay, now let's talk about pricing. Price. Premiere is the most expensive. By a lot. Yes. And it's it's a subscription-based yes. software. Yes, so it costs $50 a month, right? No, so like if you get the whole Creative Cloud, which mm -hmm. like you kind of want, like in order to get the most out of Premiere, yeah, you, you want the whole Creative Cloud, that's mm -hmm. $50 a month. Premiere by itself mm -hmm. is 20, I think. And yeah. then if you're a student, which we are, and the entire Creative mm -hmm. Cloud subscription is like $20 a month. Yeah. That's like how we're affording this. Yeah, that's um, the only way we are yeah. affording it. Filmora Pro. Filmora Pro. Is $150 lifetime license, mm -hmm. I believe. I um, If you're upgrading from Filmora 9, actually, at least for a little while, they are running a discount. I don't know if they still are. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's a really good price because you're essentially getting Premiere mm -hmm. and HitFilm smashed into one well, yeah, for hit like a lot less, right? And HitFilm is mm -hmm. free, but you also have to account potentially for the add-ons. Yes, add-ons. And that's the thing, like the add-ons mm -hmm. are expensive. Like you can- They're like $10 10, per 20, add 20, 40, I've seen packs for $40 well, on the, the website. Some of the, cause you've got uh, 3D tracking, like camera mapping, which mm -hmm. is, a very like it's a very useful thing that's like 50 bucks right but like uh, digital blood hits and mm. um like cracks and stuff yeah. like ground cracks that kind of thing that's like 10 bucks so right. you're really yeah and there's also the question like at what point is it worth is it not is it no longer worth sinking money into hit film and just upgrading to mm -hmm. maybe hit film pro or filmora pro or mm -hmm. premiere pro if I was to give advice for if you're getting into this, if you haven't started yet, is download HitFilm, tinker around with it. If it's something you're not interested in, delete it, you're done. You download HitFilm and you get really into it, like, and then you buy Premiere or Filmora or whatever, like, you'll be right at home. And yeah. like, you'll know where everything is and you'll be able to get started editing videos mm -hmm. pretty much right away and just learn as you go. Conclusions? Yes. Conclusions. It really depends what you want out of your software. If right. you want to do special effects, hit film. If you want to do um, like really, if you want to do, if you want it just to be easier to use, I'd say Filmora Pro. It's more easy to navigate. But mm -hmm. if you want professionalism, then definitely yeah, Premiere. Premiere, yeah. 
Are you upgrading from Filmora 9? Then Filmora Pro and Premiere are both worthwhile upgrades depending of course on your budget. But do you want to work with the rest of the Creative Cloud? Then Premiere is a no-brainer. Are you just a regular old YouTuber like me? then any one of the three editors discussed in this video is a solid choice. Just consider your own individual needs when making a decision. As always, feel free to contribute to the discussion in the comments. What do you think of Premiere, mm -hmm. of Filmora Pro specifically, of HitFilm? Um, yeah, let us know for sure. Be sure to subscribe to my channel as well for pretty much any videos related to filmmaking, editing, tech mm -hmm. reviews, gear reviews, all of that. If you wanna subscribe to my YouTube channel even though I have absolutely nothing there, Thank you. Another good video. Yeah, for sure. Uh, talk to you later. All right, bye.